Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're actually going to do something a little bit different. You see, there's a lot of Warhammer-based video games out there. Some of them are good, some of them are great, and some of them are, well, you know. But it's a new year and we're expecting loads of new Warhammer games to be announced or released, as there's a few that we're pretty much waiting for. Cough, cough, Space Marine 2. And whilst we're waiting for them, we might as well play some of the gold ones, some of them which are just really, really good and demand a playthrough or multiple ones. So with this video, we're going to go over the Warhammer games that you should be playing through in 2023. So with that being said, let's not waste any more time and jump right in. So we're going to start off with Warhammer 40,000 Gladius Relics of War. So this is a turn-based game, and, and yeah, I know the community is kind of sick of turn-based games, but hear me out with this one. So... Do you like Civilization? This is the best way of saying it. Because if you do, and you love Warhammer, well, this is pretty much as close as you're going to get. So, it's a turn-based strategy game, it's based on a whole planet, you've got a multitude of different races. You start off with four playable races, but they've been slowly adding in more DLC as time has progressed. This game came out in 2018, but has had a healthy amount of different uh, DLCs, not only just, like, fixes here and there with like say for example assault packs and recruitment packs which just adds in new units but also say for example they've added in the adeptus mechanicus the tau hell they just recently added in the sisters of battle and each of the factions play quite differently so you've got different mechanics involved and different play styles it's not the most complex game i wouldn't say that it's as complex as say for example civilization which yeah isn't that complex either but it's definitely got that flavor. You've got different types of base building. Like, for example, if you're building as the Space Marines, you've only got one base, but it becomes absolutely massive. Or if you're playing as the Imperial Guard, it's playing like Guardsmen, right? So you want loads of troops on the field as fast as possible with multiple bases out there. If you're playing as the Necrons, you can only build on a actual tomb. It fits with the lore, too. And the game works on seed maps, so it's really, really replayable if you just want to you know, play again, but in a different type of landscape. Hell, it's very customizable too, so you can choose who you're playing against, just like Civilization. It's a bit of a shame that I don't hear too many people talk about this game, especially since they've actually got quite a good modding community too, who are working on custom factions. And this is the kicker, right? This is something that you don't hear often. The modders are actually fairly supported by the devs. They're encouraged, which is a great thing. It's a game where I put myself on loads of stupid situations and try to do loads of stupid challenges, but it's very fun. And honestly, a lot more people should be talking about this game. Jumping into an Age of Sigmar based game, we have Warhammer Underworlds Online. Yeah, I know, it might be surprising, but I'm a very big fan of Warhammer Underworlds, the tabletop game. It's something where you can just play in a pub, essentially. You can have some fun, it's a short game. It's one of the low barriers of entry Warhammer games, which, yeah, they do exist, just very, very rare. But this one is special because of another reason. It actually plays like the tabletop. So if you're looking into getting into Warhammer tabletop, if you've been thinking about Age of Sigmar and so on, well, Warhammer on the Worlds Online is the perfect way to start, rather than just buying some miniatures and then deciding that you might not like it or not and spending, what, £30 on a box or, and then extra money for the paints and all that. Jump on this. It plays extremely well. I've had a few conversations with the devs in the past and they've actually been quite active with their community. There's a decent amount of DLC. There's actually quite a lot. This varies from either new warbands or just some cosmetics in case you want the cosmetics. I know a lot of people don't like that and to be honest, I don't like that either. However, if you want a video game which is basically as close to the tabletop as you'll ever get, Really, this is the best source, officially at the very least. I actually played this game a few times during the lockdown because I do play on the worlds, uh, on the tabletop and stuff. And since we couldn't play IRL because, you know, there was some weird thing going on for the past two years, um, this was a pretty good supplement, to be honest. Next, we're going to go into Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Martyr, as this is a game that I've only recently played and, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. If you like games in a very similar style to, say, Path of Exile or, you know, Diablo, this is probably the game for you. It's very customizable and they're still getting decent amount of DLC. That means that they're still getting content and they're still getting updates. Hell, a new season has just started for them, which allows you to get, you know, good boy points on the leaderboard, you know, get some more currencies, new missions. Missions. You've also got a new DLC which was just recently released also which is for a Soritas. That's a sister of battle with three different types of playstyle as there's three classes to it. There's actually quite a lot and I was quite surprised with this game mostly because 
Um, we've seen other Warhammer games try and attempt this, and it normally gets abandoned, which you know is a Warhammer fan story of our life, but it even gets better. Because on a short four and a half hour stream that I did, there were so many different enemy variants, and it's not just like the basic Chaos Space Marines and Cultists. We were seeing Alpha Legion, we were seeing Word Bearers, we were seeing Death Guard, we were seeing Forge World stuff. I was honestly really, really impressed because the attention to detail was just absolutely amazing for those models, despite the fact that you're not really looking at those models close up. The story is actually not that bad too, and yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. This was a game that I was kind of avoiding at the very beginning because I'd played Chaos Bane, different devs, but you know what I mean. Chaos Bane had the similar thing, but it was one fantasy, and it was just abandoned. Uh, yeah, there was so much potential for that game. So I was a bit worried about this one, but Inquisitor Marta just proved to be that good. And it's definitely a game that I'm actually enjoying on my free time. There's multiple campaigns depending on the DLC that you have, and it seems to be fairly long. Mind you, I'm doing a lot of the side stuff because, you know, better gear and so on. It works in a very similar system to Diablo if you're used to that. So you want to, you know, get your characters stronger. You want to get some good loot. But yeah, this is definitely a game that you should pick up if you haven't already, and I think it's actually on sale right now because there's a Steam sale going on. Yes, it's 80% off, and keep in mind that many of these games that we'll be talking about today also are going to be on sale because of the Steam sale, so if I were you, take advantage. You could get a pretty good deal. Next, we're going to jump on to Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. This is another Warhammer 40k game, and yes, turn-based once again, focusing more on the format that's very popular with, like, say, for example, XCOM. So it's squad based and it's focused on a campaign where you're going to have to deal against Nurgle. Again, I know Nurgle's pretty overused, but this game's quite different because it's very punishing and I really like punishing games. That, and I'm a really big fan of the Grey Knights. I know, I know, I'm pretty vanilla when it comes to that, but the Grey Knights are like the coolest chapter of Space Marines, let's be honest. The other ones are just like... Yeah, spoilers at least. But yeah, this is a game that you're going to have to focus a lot on building up your troops, building up your squad and making sure that they're geared out because the missions are going to get harder. This campaign is punishing, like I said, because you're going to have to be quick and the newest DLC does actually quite help out, to be honest. But the main reason that I like this so much, again, is because it's a difficult game to kind of get into. Yes, there's ways to just kind of cheese it, but if you're just going to go with a standard squad and not try to meta build with loads of interceptors, because, yeah, that's still there, you can pretty much experiment with loads of different loadouts and just try to find the one that's right for you, plus... Yeah, everyone's kind of customizable quite well with the skill-based level-up system, all the different types of weapons that you can get. Yeah, there's a lot of playability here. The game story is actually pretty good too, which, you know, for a Warhammer game is actually quite surprising. And, you know, Andy Serkis voicing a character that you're going to be interacting with fairly often. That's just the icing on the cake. And now for something completely different with Warhammer 40,000 Shooters, Blood and Teeth, which this might surprise you, but I think that this is the best Warhammer game that's been released in recent years. Perhaps in all time. Yeah, I know. Sounds weird, but let me give you my reasoning. So this is a 2D side-scroller where you can either play solo, you can play with friends, and the objective of the game is you're playing as an orc, and you're basically just out there causing havoc. But you're playing as an orc, which is cool, and it's silly, it's loud too. There's even custom metal music that they recorded for the soundtrack here. The fact of the matter is this game did not try to be anything else. You see this with a lot of Warhammer video games when it's just like, it's this, but Warhammer 5 this but warhammerfied whereas this game yeah no this was an orca game this was just loud and silly and it's exactly what was needed honestly this game was really really surprising when i first saw this getting announced which i believe was warhammer skulls about a year or two years ago sorry i was like well who asked for this then I got to play it and I thought, wow, this is actually really, really good. If you think about it this way, if you know orcs, and this doesn't have to be just the 40k orcs, this could be Warhammer Fantasy orcs, this could be Age of Sigma orcs, they exist just to break shit, and, you know, that's exactly what this one does. It's great. It's the Warhammer game that I think a lot of people did need. And this is a lot of praise. You guys know me that I will be critical when I need to be, but this game just was everything that I could have expected from an orc game and more, to be honest. Obviously, we can't talk about Warhammer games without mentioning Dawn of War, the first one with its expansions as, yeah, RTS game, we've all pretty much played this. If you haven't, you're missing out, and trust me, you should, because even though the graphics are a little bit dated by today's standards, it is still one of the best Warhammer games. 
Unfortunately, the series has long died now because of stupid mistakes by developers, but Game 1, with its expansions, gives you a lot to play for. There's a good story at the beginning for the base game and its first expansion. Then the second and third expansions were more like a sandbox style. Think of it in a very similar sense, actually, to Battle for Middle Earth, in a sense. And yeah, it's pretty good. You've got loads of races. Each time that you get a new expansion, you get new races, new factions to play as, new play styles. It's honestly really, really good. And hell, if you get all the way up to Soulstorm, which is the last expansion for game one, there's a very active modding community, which adds in loads of new playable factions. Some of them are custom voiced. It's something which just continues and continues to evolve through the heart of the fans. God, I really do wish that the rumors are true and we do get this remastered, because I would love to see this game in some more modern graphics and obviously modern controls and stuff. I guess we're going to have to wait and just hope for the best. We will take the time here to mention Game 2, and keep in mind that this isn't a tier list video, it's more of just talking about the best Warhammer games out there. But yeah, Game 2 for Dawn of War was a bit of a change, as it's, it's still an RTS, but in more of a squad-based RTS, rather than you building up bases and so on. It has a pretty good story, and it continues on through expansions too, in the form of DLC. And I must say, this is still a pretty good game. It's right before the fall of the Dawn of War series, so don't you worry. This also has a decent modding community too. If you want to continue the story, definitely something that you should do, as this is the true canon ending. We're not, like, going to acknowledge Game 3. Naturally, Vermintide 2 needs to be mentioned in this video, because Vermintide 2 is just absolutely amazing. It's still getting updated regularly as time progresses. We're still waiting for another DLC, which, uh... Anytime now, anytime now. But this is a Warhammer Fantasy game which proved that Warhammer Fantasy was still popular. Even despite the end times happening, the Vermintide series has, well, kept the flame burning and been reinforced now with the Total War series, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So what's this game? Well, this game is a hack and slash multiplayer game. You've got to play with friends or, well, you can play with bots or randoms, but it's usually better with friends. Randoms, it's definitely fine sometimes, but you do get a little bit of toxicity in the chat. That's expected from this type of game format, which is, you know, it's basically Left for Dead, but in Warhammer Fantasy. And you're going to be fighting Skaven, you're going to be fighting Beastmen, you're going to be fighting Chaos Warriors. There's different classes to play with, each with their own subclasses, so you can tailor your characters exactly as to what playstyle you prefer. And, well, yeah, it's just that good. Go around through all the maps, which are quite long, they can last around 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how quick you go around through them and what difficulty, and just hack your way through hordes and hordes of Skaven. What's not to love? Warhammer Mechanicus is a game which has also evaded my radar. Mostly because, and yeah, this might sound very weird, but it literally evaded my radar until about two, three years ago. So this is another turn-based game. Yep, surprise, surprise, it's very popular within the Warhammer series, but focused around you playing as the Adeptus Mechanicus. Again, this game is very similar to the style of gameplay as XCOM and stuff, so if you're used to that type of gameplay, if you like that type of gameplay, this might actually be the one for you. As far as I've heard and spoken to the community, it's one of those games that you can just casually play and have a lot of fun with. And it'll give you a little bit of a tabletop feel, because, you know, RNG is a big thing with these types of games. Uh, more so in the style of maybe Kill Team, but yeah, it's got a great art style, a little bit cartoony, but not to the point that it's looking less like Warhammer. Darktide is one of these games which I have a weird relationship with. You see, it's essentially the successor to Vermintide, just in the 40k universe, and yeah, it's a gun shooter. Hell, I might even say that I've enjoyed Darktide more than Vermintide, but there are some glaring issues with a number of bugs creeping in throughout every patch, and really... A lot of stuff which was shown in early trailers is just not even in the game just yet. Instead, they prioritized a in-game shop. Now, I will say a few things. The fact that the classes feel very good, we don't even have the subclasses yet, but there's a decent amount of weapon changes, unless you're playing Ogryn. The maps look freaking cool, despite the fact that there is a bit of a lack of them at the moment. And, well, the story is great. The in-game cinematics are just absolutely amazing. I like mostly sword and board. I like magic and fantasy stuff, but when it came to the format of either Vermintide or Darktide, I must say I just enjoy Darktide more. Playing as a veteran sharpshooter and basically living my Krieger dreams with a shovel is just 
fun for me, right? And while there's some issues with Darktide at the moment, I will give Fat Shark the benefit of the doubt because they haven't really steered us wrong with Vermintide. So I'm hoping for the very best and just hoping that they're going to add in all the rest in future updates, free updates, I'm not paying to deal with a Chaos Spawn, with due time. I don't know, let's hope, I'm trying to keep hopeful here because I've really enjoyed it, I was streaming it for a stupid amount of times, I think I was doing 8 hour sessions every day because I was just having so much fun. There's really no point mentioning this game on this video because, uh, well, this is what my channel's known for, but Total War Warhammer, the series, yeah, it's my favorite game of all time when it comes to Warhammer video games, I think. Not only is it based on Warhammer Fantasy Battle and you can, you know, command large armies, hell, you can even play with races and factions that weren't even in the tabletop, but I do feel like this game was a part of a big reason why we're actually getting Warhammer Fantasy back as Warhammer the Old World, and for that I'll be eternally grateful. Yes, right now the game series is not in a good spot, um, CA have gone silent because, you know, Christmas and stuff, and no DLC till Q2. However, there's, what, 86 Legendary Lords that you are able to play with, so you can actually have a, quite a decent amount of fun with that. And not only that, but there's a bustling modding community with fantastic mods, from new factions to new races to massive overhauls. There's so much that you can still do with this game that, well, yeah... Sure, we're not getting anything officially at the moment, but it's not like you're starved of content. Here's hoping Creative Assembly actually pull a finger out and start giving us more DLC more often, but believe me, there's loads of talented modders there that are releasing fantastic mods, and you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't at least try them out. Next, we're going to talk about Space Marine. Yeah, the first one, because the second one isn't out yet, and I don't think it's actually coming out this year. I'm not 100% too sure if they've even given a release date yet. But the first one is going to be the best way for you to jump in. If you've not played the first, it's got a fantastic story. It's got really good gameplay that still holds up to this day. This is why so many people were crying out for a sequel, because the first one was just just that damn good. Fast pace, hack and slash, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of orcs, you've got to deal with some chaos. It's a decently long game and it has a lot of weapon variety as you progress through the campaign too. I wouldn't say the campaign itself is quite long, uh, I think it's around 10 hours, but even then, it's a good story. And that's the thing, when it's a good story, it doesn't matter. And, well, you know, it's a Warhammer game. Having good writing is rare. If you're patiently awaiting for game two, if you're very hyped up for it and you've not picked up the first one yet, I would highly suggest it. It's a very good game. Lastly, Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector. Yes, another turn-based game. Uh, this one is more focused on army versus army, though, so you do get that tabletop feel. I will say that this game has done something that I wasn't really expecting. You see, it came out first with just a story campaign where you played as the Blood Angels, a really cool chapter, the Space Marines, versus the um, Tyranids. It's a decently long campaign, but people were like, well, there's no replayability here. The campaign in itself is good, and it's got one of the best intro cinematics for any Warhammer game because it gives you so much exposition in the few minutes that it's there. It is one of the best ways to actually learn some Blood Angel lore too, I would say. And yes, you could also play as the Tyranids, but that wasn't in campaign, that was actually in a multiplayer game where you'd be, you know, army versus army. But this game has then decided, we're gonna take it up a notch. They've been adding in some DLC with new races and factions. So far, you're able to buy the Necron DLC and the Sisters of Battle DLC, but each time that a DLC has come out, they've also added in a free update with new game modes. With the Necrons came a small but customizable campaign. It's not really big, it's just three factions, you and two other NPCs, but it's again with a whole Battle for Middle Earth style where you take over locations, fight over locations if you drop into an area which is already uncontrolled by another faction and so on. And then with the Sisters of Battle came like a survival mode where you would be fighting against the Demons of Corn. Very likely that the Demons of Corn will be a playable faction in the future in the form of DLC and maybe something else will come around that time too. It's getting a lot of updates. The devs are doing quite a decent amount of work here. It's nice to see a 180 being pulled, especially for a Warhammer game. Now, I did say that we were going to be done, but there's going to be one more game as a bonus. This is Mordheim, and the reason why I'm leaving this game until the very end is because I have a real love-hate relationship with this game. So, this is a turn-based game, and it's incredibly punishing. Very similar to the style of, like, say, for example, XCOM. Uh, it's one of my favorite settings. Mordheim, to me, especially Mordheim the Tabletop, is incredibly special. And this game 
is very enjoyable, very punishing, uh, but it's abandoned. Uh, yeah, so a few DLCs were released and it got abandoned. The devs are very well known to abandon games because they did another Warhammer title known as Necromunda Underhive Wars, and that was a major shit show in the release. Uh, but um, yeah, that got abandoned too. This is the problem. Mordheim is much better than Necromunda. It's playable until the very end. It's very difficult. That last mission is... Uh, yeah, it's a doozy. I love this game, but I don't respect the devs. And I don't think I would ever buy another title from these devs again after the Necromunda issue. But if you want to be frustrated in a very XCOM style, because yes, yeah, sometimes you'll have 99% chance to hit and still miss, or think that you're going to go through a perfect mission and then randomly have one of your best characters lose an arm or a leg... Uh, this is definitely the game for you. It's not for someone who gets angry easy, but it's definitely a very enjoyable game. It's just one of those that I don't know if I would outright recommend because you'd be giving these devs money. <laughs> because it is good, it is really, really good, despite it being abandoned. Uh, and you don't really need the DLC, you can have a lot of fun without it. But the DLC does add in a little bit of extra flavor. Put it this way, despite my feelings towards the developers, I would still stream this every single Monday. This was a Mordheim Monday thing, which is gonna come back, I promise. Um, but it's just so good. It's honestly so good and so frustrating at the same time. I love and hate this game, but in a very good way. With all that being said, yeah, these are the Warhammer games that I recommend. I'm going basically through Steam, as I know Steam is the most popular thing. There's a load of other games that you can find on good old games and so on, but I wanted to talk about these as a lot of them are on sale, and you can pick them up for fairly good prices. You might as well take advantage now before it ends. I believe the sale ends on the 5th. So you've got two days, and yeah, I love Warhammer. It's very, very easy to tell considering my channel. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about these games in the comments below. Or did I miss any games? Let me know. Let me know why I'm right or wrong, I guess. Let's start a bit of a discussion. And with all that being said, well, have a nice day, guys, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.